We're in the closing stages of the Fall Turf Festival at Gulfstream Park West. And what a beautiful day it is today. We've got a fast main track, Pete. Firm turf course, nice breezy conditions, sunny skies, and nice carryovers to tell you about the first one, the Rainbow Six, which starts in race number six today with an 11 race card. $70,000 plus, it's getting up there. And if it's not it today, it's a mandatory payout tomorrow. It's a mandatory payout either way, but we'd much prefer to have a nice, big, juicy number to chase for tomorrow afternoon. You know, and they didn't hit the uh, last super high five of the day yesterday, so uh, we have a carryover going into race number one, and that is about a little over a 1000 bucks in there, so they'll bet some money into that, and that's right in the first race along with our early pick five and everything else we got going on here, Pete. Uh, one tweet I wanted to show everybody today was about uh, a, a man, Jerry Hollandoffer, got his 7,000th career victory, only the third uh, trainer to ever do that, and he got it at our sister track Golden Gate yesterday on Thanksgiving. Yeah, I, was try I actually read that. I forget who is number one, but I know that Dale Baird is on the list, and there's somebody else yeah. as well. But uh, never easy to win one race, let alone 7,000. 7,000 races, like I said, up at Golden Gate Fields. And uh, You ever been to Golden Gate? No. Oh, it's beautiful up there. I didn't go when it was actually racing. I just went by to see it. Boy, it's right. You can see the Golden Gate Bridge. I guess that's why they named it that. That's, I'd like have to go out there. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Well, now we can get ready. We can go right into the, we got an 11 race card, as I mentioned at the top of the show, and our first race is on the turf course, and we mentioned the turf is firm, Pete. Yeah, turf is firm. The track is fast today. A penultimate day of racing here in South Florida for the Fall Turf Festival meeting. We march forward to the Champions Meet, and we do it with race number one today. Claimers at the $10,000 level. These are fillies and mares set to go on the turf at five furlongs. A horse that just won last time out also takes center stage here this afternoon. Number four, Trio of Mischief is the morning line favorite. Yeah, as you mentioned, winner at this level distance on October 15th uh, drops after making last time out would look like a winning move before yielding late to finish fourth. That was at the $20,000 level, so I think the four tree of mischief, good spot for this horse today. Yeah, misspoke there, forgot about the race, but too clever by half. It was a George Navarro horse, came in from New Jersey and just freaked, went super fast, was hooked the entire way and then kicked on to win it. Trio of mischiefs, two race, two back was the race I was thinking of, behind a repeat winner in City Trip. Yeah, now I also used the number three horse in here is currently on the board of five to one very early in the wagering roxy lucy who defeated trio of mischief at gulfstream back on august 2nd now comes back to south florida after setting the pace and weakening to finish third against fourteen thousand dollar claim is going five and a half furlongs on the arlington turf course it's a, a frequent flyer wesley ward has this horse back in south florida with rafael hernandez handling the homecoming it was interesting. Roxy Lucy got up back on the turf at the summer season at Gulfstream Park and won two in a row. And uh, that was surprising only because she had had races on the turf prior to that and had not performed well. But it looks like the complete opposite. She's a totally new and improved horse since going back to the turf course. Well, I went with the number one horse in here in third, Pete. And it's uh, 10 to 1 on the morning line. And that's Kelly's Little Secret. Perfect two for two on this course, albeit racing around two turns. Shortens up to five eighths of a mile. Looking to keep that record unblemished today. Paul Copaz, the train. Orlando Boca Chica in the saddle. Yeah, we should take note. We have uh, three scratches in here. Scratch the two, six, and nine, as well as the main track only 11 with the racing on the turf. You can just withdraw all the main track onlys today. So a couple of scratches, including Mace Treasure Trove, who figured to have a chance. Ronnie, we were talking about it the last couple of days. Uh, when you're handicapping the races today and tomorrow, there's going to be some interesting ideas, such as Kelly's Little Secret trying five furlongs over the turf when she has been winning going long. That's simply a matter of trying to get in where you can as we get ready for the Champions Meet. Yeah, as the Championship Meet, some of these uh, levels that we run here at Gulfstream Park West, we don't run those race type of races over here, or you know, you have to go out of town or up to Tampa or something like that, so they try and get in, thus the full fields. But you know what? We've had full fields throughout the whole meet, as you know, because you call these races each and every day. As long as it's not the last race where the sun is blaring down at the three <laughs> furlong point. Give me a little bit of slack on that. We'll move now to the second race. The second race at six furlongs over the fast main track to kick off the early pick four. Made in claimers at the $20,000 level. We have a horse who just ran huge and a debut run at the $10,000 level. Takes the double step up here this afternoon, but he's also Ronnie's top pick in the race and the likely favorite tabletop. Yeah, and I want to go back and show you that performance last time out when he ran. He ran really well in this race. He was 31 to one that day and and uh, just ran well. You see him coming here. He's the number 12, and that's the key. He was in a tough outside post, and he rode really well here. 
It's the wrong backtrack. It's the wrong backtrack? Oh, yeah. okay. Can't oh. be Majestic Kingdom in the race no. if, if it's a two-year-old race. Well, though. he was the 12 that day, too. It's the wrong backtrack, and that was a race uh, number 10 from uh, Gulfstream Park West on October 31st. Yeah, it was a good run. He was out in the center of the race course. I remember that up past the eighth pole. Shifted ground a little bit. was a little bit green, but not too bad. Ran on well to be uh, a good second there. Uh, behind, actually, that was the back right back track. I have to eat crow. I didn't realize this race was a three-year-old contest. That was the right back track here. Pete, a little goofy today, and that the horse that won that race, Tranquil Warrior, came back and won again. I was watching the 12 horse on the outside, so uh, that was the right back track. Maybe we can cue it up again. Maybe they can cue it up again and show it. Here you go. Now, is it the right one now? Yeah, this is the right one. Majestic <laughs> right. Kingdom. I, I didn't realize this race was a two-year-old or a three-year-old race. I apologize for that. That's tabletop again out in the center of the racetrack. The winner of the race, Tranquil Warrior, comes in from Kentucky to get the victory. He was an upset-minded winner, but that did not deter tabletop from trying he's four or five down and then closes good ground to get up for second to end that afternoon yeah and i mean uh, stepping him up and i just think they started him at the ten thousand dollar level find an, a nice spot for him you know who else i used in here pete and that's the three spark the shark who's moved to the george navarro bond vita claim failed to show much in his twenty thousand dollar career debut he's back on october 7th the bond really good with new claims uh, over 30 percent eduardo nunez atop the gelded son of super saver i find it interesting eduardo nunez not doesn't ride that uh, much for this barn no, he doesn't. I, I can remember him riding a couple of horses with limited success for the George Navarro barn. Maybe he speaks to the intentions of Spark to Shark off the claim. First time starter for Giuseppe Idesernia draws an outside gate. You used him third. Yeah, now Kunovici and is the son of Bluegrass Cat debuting for Giuseppe Sidonia, as you mentioned. Seven Palm Meadows workout showing, and I think this is a great spot for a first time starter to be part of the action. I like tabletop in here, but there is that caveat that he's stepping up twice. He's going from 10,000 to 20,000. So uh, I like him. I like this performance last time out, but would not be shocked to see a first time starter maybe get the job done. Remember, this is a three year old maiden race for 20,000. That matters, and see, especially in my mind, again, and I was unprogrammed in my head thinking it was a two-year-old race. Yeah. In the three-year-old ranks, we don't run many maiden 20s. I don't know that there's a huge delineation between maiden 10 and maiden 20. Good so point. Good might point. not be that much of a step up with the older horses. Yeah. Let's go now to the third race. The third race is on turf at one mile. Turf course is firm. The claiming tag here is $8,000. Key scratch here. Scratch Ronnie's top play, Hudson Miracle. Hudson Miracle figured to be a big player in this race. It's a field of eight now. Ronnie had to back into somebody. Who was it? Yeah, that was Kitten and May, number eight, turning back to a mile after a couple of solid performance at a mile and a 16th, in which he followed a neck defeat uh, with a hard fought victory against $8,000 condition claimers. Really liked Hudson Miracle in here. Uh, I also used the number five in here, fan base stretching out slightly shipped in from mama to defeat eight thousand dollar condition claimers going seven and a half george navarro you know him winning consecutive races. you know all his different angles pete and i added the one in here real quickly when i got the scratch and this one run pretty good at the meadowlands yeah there's a couple of different things to take note of with respect to the one and the five in this race first of all the five fan base is a six that's right six time course winner. Really likes this course. Got back over this course last time out and registered a nice victory. Did so from off the speed. That was a dynamic that we had not seen with fan base last year. He was on or near the lead last year. Last time he tracked the pace and then kicked on to win it. He won it over the pace setter Divine Delivery. So the pace was uh, honest enough there where the early pace setter finished second in the race. But again, fan base loved this course. He is a six-time winner. And the one, nine and the nine being by a sire that didn't sire many horses, but he certainly was a South Florida of stalwart brushing up he was all remember danced, all the dances here in south florida nine and the nine is now a nine-year-old he's made over three hundred and twelve thousand dollars he's just getting a little long in the tooth but his competitive spirit is certainly still there yeah and uh, just a wide open affair as you mentioned we did not mention the morning line favorite in there so you might want to go back and look extra hard in that third race of the afternoon i think hudson miracle scratch has changed the dynamic uh, pretty much so uh maybe one of those all in the early pick fours well the morning line favorite with hudson miracle being out is now going to be minecraft who takes yeah. a huge drop in class today, but loses his jockey. Jose Caraballo does not get the return call. Shannonuski will ride for trainer Reed Nagel. Okay. We'll move now to the fourth race. Fourth race, six furlongs over the main track. These are $16,000 claimers. Now, these are two-year-olds, yeah. that I can promise you. High-end Queen tackled the boys last time out, lost to a repeat winner in Jet Prince, but still managed to finish third as a favorite, a three-to-two favorite, in fact. I think she'll probably be in that range here this afternoon. Did you use her on top? Yeah, I did use her on top, and one of the reasons, she's the only multiple winner in the field with that seven races, two wins a second and two-thirds. Wheeling back, as you mentioned, same level and distance. 
got bumped a little bit at the start, split horses, thought it was a really good performance, finished third as the favorite. Also that you mentioned last time out. So number two, high and queen to top of my ticket. Then went to the inside, Pete, with number one, king of jack, hoping for a clean trip. Uh, got carried wa five wide on the turn, if you remember last time out. Finished fourth behind aforementioned high and queen when they competed for a $20,000 tag, and that was back on November 5th. Yeah, if you're looking at the buyer progressions, you have to be happy with what you see with King of Jack. Ran a 35 fig while winning easily across town at Gulfstream in the slop, then took on winners, finished fourth, but still jumped up uh, 12 points on the buyer scale. So she appears to be headed in the right direction, and her trainer, Victor Barboza Jr., does very, very good work and is very much under-regarded here in South Florida. Well, you know, number four, awesome challenge, renewing the rivalry today with both horses we were just talking about after expending, I thought, some valuable energy when she got loose pre-race and then followed, went up dual for the lead and finish fifth behind the top two. So maybe if she gets in the gate and uh, saves some of that energy, maybe she can close the gap on high end queen and number one, king of jack. Well, the interesting wild card horse is the number five, Scoff, comes in off a of victory. It was a maiden special weight victory, too. Came up north in West Virginia at Charlestown going the four and a half furlong, one turn hook distance. Was well clear and then held sway to win it. The reason why this horse becomes a huge contender here is just based on her quick first gear. She's very, very fast. She's been in front in three of her four races to her credit, and those were races at Charlestown, Indiana, and Laurel. She's aggressively placed for trainer Dane Kabiski, who's trying to win races here. Yeah, Dane Kabiski, boy, he's, boy, he's entered a lot of horses over the last couple of days, and all those horses seem to run well, so uh, one of the horses, second choice on the morning line, only six in that race with the scratch of the number seven horse, Captured the Sun. Let's go now to the fifth race. The fifth race is a very nice start. Our allowance optional claiming event. These are fillies. They're on turf at a mile and a 16th. Have a variety of invaders in here, including a horse who was second in the grade one Alabama last year. Now that was on dirt. Tries turf here this afternoon. Only turf race for this horse was not very good. We're talking about joint return. We'll talk a little bit more about joint return in a minute. But the horse with the best uh, resume in the field comes out for the Todd Pletcher barn, Al Jalela. Hey, Al Jalela is stretching out to a mile in his 16th after I thought a really solid local debut at a mile in which he uh, uh, broke from that tough outside post that day. Post 14, stalk the pace, finished third. You know the connections, Todd Pletcher, $450,000 daughter of Unbridled Song. Uh, another bullet work up at Palm Beach Downs. Yeah, Todd Pletcher basically has all the horses at Palm Beach Downs. So uh, it, uh, just one fired a bullet against probably one of his uh, stable mates. And number was six, I thought it's the logical choice in there. Here's the key question, and if you're trying to poke holes in the favorite, here's the question you have to ask yourself. Is she good enough to beat older horses? Are we at the time in the year, we're almost in December now, is there a huge delineation between a three-year-old and an older horse? I, I don't really, uh, you know, factor it in too much at this time of the year if they're good horses because they're all sort of catching up to each other. The horse I used in second, I, I want to hear about joint return too. Couldn't use that horse because of, uh, you know, just his past performance on the dirt. Certainly has the class to run well in here. But I did go with Sawyer, who's uh, looking for a smooth trip uh, after lacking a bit of room at the quarter pole last time out, finishing third. That was a $62,500 optional claimer. Jane Sabine. Belly, Paco Lopez to ride. Tyler Gaffigan is going to stick with the one horse in here in my time. In my time is a horse that's 5-2 to two on the morning line. She comes out of a couple of stakes races. Finished third in the Panama City over the Gulfstream Park turf course last time out, or two starts ago. And then last time lost to the very classy Kittens Dumplings while going a mile and an eighth. Probably a little too far for her. She cuts back a little bit here for trainer War Marty Wolfson. Yeah, she really likes this distance. A mile and a 16. Three races with two wins and a second. So what do you want to say now about the... Well, it's joint? interesting. Joint return 12-1 to one on the morning line. Yes, she has not won a race in quite a long time. She made over 300,000 last year, though, 473,000 to her credit. She's multiply graded stakes, she, uh, grade, graded stakes placed, I should say. She was second in the grade one Alabama, beaten only three parts of a length at a big price, came back to be graded stakes placed this year at Delaware Park, and then tried sheer drama in the Dell Cap. These are some huge company lines. And the key thing is, is she only has that one race on the turf. It was at Saratoga. She didn't run well at all, but she also didn't look like she really got comfortable at all either. So, and obviously, trainer John Service is going to try it again so if it was that bad of an experiment in New York he wouldn't be trying the spot I don't you think you know and I when I first looked at the this past performances race I put a check right next to this horse and you know I said oh I got to use this horse without a doubt on the class angle then backed off a little bit but if I can get 12 to 1 uh, I'll be running to the window but uh, that'll be a seven horse field I don't think you're going to get 12 to 1 today well here's the thing too the horse that won that last race that uh, this horse comes out of America she's recorded a chance she's second choice on the morning line in the feature race today in New York the gopher wand. 
Well, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to watch back, and I think it's a horse when you're putting your tickets together, you know, your early pick four ticket, uh, some horse that you might got. I think you got to sort of add that horse, because if that horse runs back to its class, even though it didn't run well on the turf, it's going to be gone. Well, speaking of Rainbow Six, we don't start the Rainbow Six in race five as we had been doing. We instead started in race number six, race six today on the main track at one mile. Again, these are two-year-olds. They're in for $35,000. A horse that's never been two turns, but based on running lines, looks like he'll appreciate the change in distance is the three strong composition. Yeah, stretching out to this mile after rallying to finish second versus this same level going three quarters of a mile. It's Larry Pilati, Eddie Castro atop the son of Mancini. Uh, you know, it just, uh, I find this race really, really wide open just because of the reasons you just mentioned. Uh, the horses, a lot of them trying uh, two turns for the first time. I, I threw the two horse in here, biggest drama in second. is it's now gelding. He's dropping to this level and returning from the layoff. Stalked the pace. He faded to finish a distant fifth. That was against $75,000 optional claimers. That was going a mile. Dan Peter, Edgar Zayas. I just like, you know, these this the breeding on this horse, and I think that this horse can run well in this spot. Well, the winner of the horse, uh, our, your top plays last race, Strong Composition, was Lying Chief. That was the really sharp winner for McIntosh, and Strong Composition went favored that day, had to cover a little bit of ground, and was probably just left with a little too much to do. Better trip here and a change in distance should suit him well. The other horse I wanted to ask you about, Ron, is the number six, Cheech Thunder. This horse is taking a step up in class for trainer Antonio Sano, going from 16 to 35, but he ground out, or grinded out, I should say, grinded out a victory last time out, going seven furlongs, always tricky to debut going seven furlongs we're only going an eighth of a mile longer here today he looked like he wanted some more ground maybe he has a chance on the step up yeah and that's what i was saying about this race i just think it's so wide open that was my you know my next selection after the, i used the five dean assaults actually had uh you know cheech thunder on my ticket and made a little of adjustment because of that step up uh, that you mentioned from the sixteen thousand dollar level but antonio sano our leading trainer just doing a good job here but listen to about five dean of salts and this one is uh moved to the steve Clisaris. Bon V to claim, drew clear to defeat the 16 maidens also, but it was going a mile 70 yards here on October 12th. Edgar Prado named to ride, proven commodity going some distance. That is true. He broke maiden last time out. He was expected to do it and did so easily in the concluding stages. Scratch in here of number seven, Alex the Dude. So a field of seven to kick off your rainbow six. Again, as Ronnie touched on at the top of the program, more than $70,000 carried over in the 20 cent rainbow six. We'll turn our attention next to a very, very tough race. Made in special weight variety. On the turf at seven and a half furlongs. We have a scratch of the nine killer bird. 14 Evelyn's Dream probably comes out because there's no rain in the forecast. So that leaves us with 12. But of the 12, probably nine or 10 of them have a look in here. These are maidens on turf. A very, very tough race. Ronnie went with number five, Bridal Fashion, for trainer Ralph Nix. Yeah, this one was game of defeat when he returned from an almost seven month layoff of the split horses and finished second at this level and distance. Ralph Knicks, Tyler Gaffleyon to top this. This is a 350,000, I'm saying he, but uh, I mean, uh, daughter of uh, uh, this is Unbridled Song, so she's a filly against the boys in here today. Right? No, these are Phillies. Oh, these are Phillies. That's right. I, oh, I got to wrote, wrote it down here. So, Good. Now so, we're even. Now, now we're even. even. You made a mistake. I made, I made a mistake. You made one mistake, so we're even now. Well, at least we'll both get yelled at. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, I was looking down here, and I saw, uh, didn't see Philly and Mare. So, the number five, Bridal Fashion. Lost the nine horse in here. Killer Bird. As I mentioned, getting back to number five, Bridal Fashion. $350,000 daughter of Unbridled Song. I thought it was a really nice performance last time out. Well, the thing about this race is that if you look at the form on all these horses, a lot of them have races that make you think that they're getting ready to have a breakout performance. The problem is, is you really can't hang your hat on a maybe, but there's a lot of maybes in here. So maybe it's a, I shouldn't say maybe, it definitely is a very good betting contest. Number six, Magical Empire comes in from New York. Ralph Nix is, also trains that horse. This horse is coming by way of Belmont and Saratoga. Had some good races at Gulfstream Park during the Champions Meet, but has been off since July. Paco Lopez has the call. The other logical contender here. Well, let me give you a 20 to 1 shot here. just uh, for 20 to 1 shot. Fire away. Number 8, my dude, shows a stamina, uh, a trio of stamina enhancing five furlong turf workouts over the Palm Meadows turf in preparation for the first start since returning from a 10-month layoff to finish fifth behind, uh, you know, bridal fashion in that race. The Michelle Nihe uh, got strong grass rider in here. Farragal Lynch handling the rematch. And if you follow Michelle Nihe, 
Her horse has really progressed nicely in the second start after a layoff. So I think this horse can run well in this spot. If you don't think it could be on the, uh, you know, the late pick five ticket or something, certainly could be on the rolling super high five ticket. And if you get 20 to 1, I think you got to jump aboard there. You see I added the glasses. Now I can see their fillies and mares. I was trying to be cute, not putting my glasses on and not seeing that. I have nothing more to say to that other than Madhu will be a big price. And when we were talking about this race, we told you that there's not a huge delineation between the horses who are morning line favorites and the horses like Madhu who are long on the morning line. Another horse who will offer you some wagering value made the bottom of Ronnie's ticket. Second start off a of freshening for trainer Dolly Bostwick. Like Michelle Nihe, she does not do well with horses off the layoff, but they certainly get the screws tightened. We're talking about the two, Miss Marianne, who picks up our Maciel Jaramillo. Well, one of the horses that's scratching this race, Killer Bird, I really like this afternoon, but if you look at Miss Marianne, this is when he ran really nice behind it last time out, so I just think you, all the reasons you mentioned, Dolly Boswick second off the uh, uh, layoff, and this jockey's been just riding great. I'm see El Jaramillo, if you've been watching him, I had a couple of wins, I believe, yesterday, yeah, right? Yeah, had a riding couple double of, yesterday. Riding double yesterday, so this horse, a 12 to 1 in the morning line, a wide open affair, you know, you got the favorite up there, but it's not a favorite of a bridal fashion where you say, okay, I'm going to single here, you got to go deep. Got to go very deep as for as much as your ticket can allow you to go as this is the toughest race of the sequence. We'll turn our attention next to race number eight on the card. The eighth race has claimers of the $30,000 variety racing six furlongs. On paper, this race set to be a rematch between two Kathleen O'Connell runners. However, she withdrew one of them. Scratch number one, Jaden's Best, and also scratch number three, Mystical Miles. Now we have the headliner on the outside, Wicked Rascal. We'll go back and take a look at his last race. It comes with Jaden's Best and Loudon's Gray. Loudon's Gray didn't run bad on the turf the other day, uh, but Wicked Rascal was heavily favored down toward the inside. And at this point in time, I thought he was dead where he stood, but he's going to battle back to win it. Off the top of the turn, Wicked Rascal cuts the corner. That's Loudon's Gray on the far outside and Jaden's Best between them. Now, if you look at the running lines, Wicked Rascal doesn't mind getting hooked. That's not the problem. The problem was that it was a two-prong attack, but Wicked Rascal, the more uh, seasoned of the two in terms of uh, stakes class races, will outgame Jaden's Best to the finish with Loudon's Gray back third there. Extra game run from Wicked Rascal. He did not get claimed the last time out. He's in for 30 today. Might be a few takers off that backtrack. And, you know, I wanted to see that rematch because was really front Kathleen O'Connell, both horses, you know, separated by a nose. Uh, I went with Rick, Wicked Rascal on top. Actually had, originally had Jaden's best in third. The horse I used in second was the number six, Gallo Donato. This one drops back, I believe, into a competitive level after following a commanding four-and-a-half length victory. That was against $16,000 optional claim. It was back in the 1st of October. Comes back, chases the pace, fades, but that's against $62,500 optional claimers last time out. So Gallo Donato, uh, I don't know what is on, six to one in the morning line. Marcos Menendez, I think this is a horse, especially with the scratch of one, uh, Jaden's best can be right there at the wire. He has all kinds of alibis. First of all, this is a huge class drop. He was running against some very nice horses last time out. You see CZ and Roger Rocket in the running lines. And of course, the winner one more night who came from well off the speed. The pace collapsed in that race and Gallo Donato was a victim of that. It was his first trip on this racetrack and now he's taking a huge drop in class. A big license to improve and a key contender in race number eight. Anything else, sir? No, that's it for race number eight. Uh, not that it's that easy, but I'm ready to flip the page. Well, it's certainly much easier than the start of the pick five. Race number seven was tricky. The eighth race, you can pare it down. Let's now look at the ninth race. I don't think this race is all that easy. This is a nice allowance race of the optional claiming variety on turf at a mile and a sixteenth. We have a couple of scratches in here. Scratch the six, the seven, and the ten. So it's a field of eight, but of the eight, I think about six of them have a chance here. Yeah, we want to go back and show you the performance of one of those horses, and that is is a snow trouble. I know you were enamored with his race last time out or when the horse went to the inside. Yeah, well, we, if we had backed it up a little bit, he was dead last, but he still doesn't look like he has any <laughs> chance. He's the gray. He's down toward the inside. He's fifth right now. That was the eighth pole that they just passed, and here he comes up the inside lane, no less. Usually with horses on the uh, closing from that far back, they want to rally on the outside, but Snow Trouble kicked it into another gear and got up to win it and win it going away. Here's the caveat, at least from my vantage point, when we've watched this horse run so far this season, this is a horse, by the way, that when he gets to Gulfstream Park, he's going to move up even more. I don't think he's a big fan of the turns. He doesn't seem to run the turns that well and then when they get into the straightaway, he really picks it up. He's done that in his last two races and this race at a mile and a sixteenth, the same distance he won at last time. Well, the horse I put on top, I had him on it, but I did go with the number 11 in here, Hampstead Heat. It's turning back to a mile and a sixteenth. I had picked this horse last time out. 
Five races at the distance, two wins and one second and one third. After shipping in from one mile with a two race win streak on the line and running a good closing third to a repeat stakes winner, a horse called Lochte. That was in the nine furlong oh, spot. Only a great one winner. Yeah, a great one winner. Uh, Lochte, and that was in a great one. I had picked this horse that day to be on the ticket with thing, and I thought he ran exceptionally well. Nobody was beating Lochte. Lochte come back and win again. So Hampstead Heath, I think, is a logical contender in there. Snow trouble, of course, with the connections. Uh, Todd Fletcher, you got to have that one on the ticket. But I like the number 11 there. Hampstead Heath so much, I made him my best bet today. Best bet of the day. Makes sense. He came in from Toronto. He was had a reason to not appreciate the weather change. You know, we talked about Reporting Star, who also came in from Toronto on Sunshine Millions preview day. That race stands out to me only because he was supposed to win, and I think the, the weather was the, what did him in in that particular event. So, Hampstead, he should be better today than he was last time, and he doesn't have to be much better than to win this race. The horse you used third is another horse coming in from Woodbine, but he's been in South Florida. He's actually been in New Jersey, and then in South Florida, they're working on taking their time getting him back to the races a horse who has a pretty good figures number eight smooth stone yeah and it's a full brother to 1.3 million dollar earner irish mission if you remember irish mission won the very one won the la Praviante uh in the george navarro bond really nicely bred if you look up and down lots of stakes winners in the family makes his return as you mentioned to south florida looking for his first victory here's the thing since 2014 uh george navarro very good with new additions to the barn jose caraballo going to be in the saddle this afternoon, I believe, and uh, no, it's uh, it's going to yes. be get yeah, uh, Jose Caraballo in the saddle this afternoon, and this horse. Five-year-old son of Giants Crossway really bred beautifully. I would not be shocked if this horse jumped up and won it. One of many with a chance to start today's late pick three. Two rider changes here. Two steals to guy. Make the rider Orlando Boca Chica. And on the three, dynamic impact. Make the rider Paco Lopez. Of course, we will catch you up on all the other changes in just a few minutes. We'll move now to the 10th race. 10th race at seven furlongs. $6,250 claimers. Ronnie uses the old pro, a horse that you have to respect. He's a 17-time winner. He draws the rail and drops back into a level that he won at two starts ago. Speed is his weapon of choice. Double judge. Yeah, double judge I have on the ticket, but I did start with the number 10 in here, Pete, and that's Houston Bull, who will try and make it two in a row after notching his fourth career victory, uh, career win at seven furlongs, I should say, when he broke from post 11, went right to the lead and pulled away to win by almost four lengths. And you know I'm a sucker for horses that run well. At seven furlongs, Gilberto Zerpa, Edgar Zayas in the saddle again. I really like that performance. Double judge, you mentioned. This horse is just amazing. He's returning uh, from his latest layoff, looking to add credence to that old horse for Gore Theory. He's an 11 time winner here, and he's looking for his fifth victory at the seven furlong distance. Juan Arias spots the old wars perfectly at this level. It's interesting because Boca Chica has the call on Double Judge, and Double Judge does business one way. He goes as fast as he can for <laughs> as far as he can. Problem is, that's been Houston Bulls' tactics as well. Might be a recipe for disaster. Disaster. If it is, maybe some horses from off the speed. You use Dangerous Brew. Also give a look to Rivershire. Rivershire getting his second start off of an extended vacation. He should be better today. Yeah, and he's 9-2 to two on the board. Dangerous Brew, another multiple winner locally. He's had 14 uh, starts here with four wins, so he likes the track. And, uh, uh, boy, I found this one even harder than the other races you were talking about to figure out who the winner's going to be in here. Well, there's a lot of hard-knocking campaigners. The problem is, as we touched on, tactics will be key in race number 10. 11th and final race. This is, again, par for the course. <laughs> this is tricky. 11th race, condition claimers on turf. They've not won a race on the turf in six months. We're on a mile and a 16th over the turf here. A lot of veteran campaigners trying to get back in form. We have a scratch in here of the 13 Palatine Hill, but still a field of 12. Pickett's corner all the way on the outside. Merritt's top billing here. Yeah, he's dropping to this $8,000 condition claiming level, stretching out to a mile and a 16. After rallying late to hit the board in one of two $10,000 open claimers going Going a mile, Orbe Mirage, Paco Lopez handling the outside draw today. Yeah, the number, the number 12 Pickett's Corner. Certainly, it seems like he has the best form to win the race. A horse that was second last time out to a nice, impressive winner fan base. We talked about fan base. He was a course specialist. He's in earlier today. If he happens to run well, I think it moves up the chances of the eight Divine Delivery. Well, Divine Delivery, if you look at the past performances in this race, and I did numerous times, this one looks like the controlling speed in a race a chock full of competitors that do their running in the latter stages of the race. He's the previous winner at the distance, and I think he's got to go. 
That's it. He's got to go. He looks like the speed of the speed to me. And horses have been doing much better front-running type horses on the turf course over the last few days. That's absolutely true. The horse you used third is a veteran named Skiff's Brewmeister. He's a six-time winner. None of those six wins came over this course, but that didn't mean he didn't run well last time out. In fact, he was rolling late to finish third. Yeah, and I mean, you guys think you got to use him on your ticket, and as you see with the full field of 12 here, we will certainly have the uh, super high five in this race, and one of the horses, uh, Skiff's Brewmeister, that you got to have on your ticket. Well, if you have all these horses that we keep saying you have to have on your ticket, you're going to have to have a pretty big ticket, but it might be worth it because we have a carryover in the Rainbow Six today of more than $70,000. 20 cent play. It begins on race six with a first post time of 12 noon. And as Pete mentioned a little earlier, if the Rainbow Six is not hit today, there'll be mandatory payouts tomorrow on closing day in everything. Yeah, everything and well. It's the, this is the penultimate day of the Fall Turf Festival. 11 races on tap. We'll get you caught up on the changes in just a few moments. For Ron, I'm Pete. Good luck today.